I absolutely think it's a spectrum. Um, I have some patients who can eat like five or 10 foods who feel terrible all the time. Of course, we're getting them better. So they're starting to feel much better, but, um, but their starting place is extremely sensitive. Maybe they can take a handful of supplements if they're lucky, all their medications have to be compounded because they react to virtually everything. Um, and those are very severe, what I would call hypersensitive mast cell patients. And then I have people who are fairly robust. They may not have any allergy symptoms at all, but they could have more exercise intolerance and fatigue and kind of chronic viral issues um, that don't even look like a mast cell patient. Um, and you know, everything in between, uh, you don't have to have every system involved, uh, in order to have mast cell activation, but it's multiple sy symptoms, um, is really the presentation. There is thought to be a genetic component. So there was some research that was done in Germany and, what the literature shows is that these are not necessarily um, their somatic mutations, not germline mutations. So people can have um, a variety of different presentations. The expectation is that it's about 17% of the population. So one in six of the population. But I do think with COVID, um, those statistics have increased. And so it looks like it's more 20, 25% of the population. Now we're talking about one in four people have some sort of variation of mast cell activation potentially. You're saying with COVID, the num the prevalence of these gene mutations has increased? How would that be? Because COVID is a very uh, toxic inflammatory condition, whether it's the, the, it's the spike protein. So reaction to the spike protein, uh, from either option, uh, can trigger mast cell activation in somebody who may have a predisposition, you know, maybe they were an allergic kid, maybe they had asthma or eczema as a kid, and they've been pretty robustly healthy. Um, they may not know that they're living in a moldy house or that they had a, uh, a chronic infection that their immune system has previously kept in check. But now you add a, a, a flame of COVID to the, the person who has this underlying susceptibility and it sparks a fire and that fire we call mass cell activation. How do you see the, the, the causation of this? How does somebody arrive at a place of overactive mass cells? If, if, is, and is that an accurate way of phrasing it? Can we say that this is overactive mass yes. cells? Okay, so how do how does that how do you see the the root causes of this uh, syndrome actually developing? I don't know if we know exactly what's happening at a cellular level for the the trip to happen, but what I can tell you clinically is that um, it seems to be cumulative, and some of the biggest root causes are mold exposure, um, mold exposure in the vast majority of my professional colleagues uh, experience is one of the primary triggers. And, you know, we know mold causes oxidative stress, it causes inflammation, it can trigger um, autoimmune conditions, it can trigger allergy symptoms. And so I think it, in some people, it's also triggering mast cell activation syndrome. Um, that's been one of the biggest drivers in terms of a root cause. Um, probably the second root cause that I see um, is uh, Bartonella infection. Bartonella is otherwise known as cat scratch fever. Um, it's related, it, it's lumped together with Lyme disease, even though they're not always seen in tandem. Uh, we can see Lyme disease without Bartonella and vice versa, um, but that tends to be a very big trigger. And again, those mast cells, their job is to survey for foreign invaders. And so they're seeing these foreign invaders and having that 
that uh, triggered response. I don't know why exactly it's happening. I don't know if we have the details of, of why that happens, but that's clinically what myself and my colleagues are seeing. Mm 